Hey everyone, uh, really good to see you. Thank you all for making the time. Um, this is a presentation on a human-centered design approach um, to really understand what the community um, thinks of you know development projects, their lived experience, and I really hope that we can share some of these insights and recommendations with you guys um, with the knowing that we are going to work together to implement these things. Um, and Community United of North Arcata is a group that I helped facilitate and organize to help mesh that relationship as well as other relationships with neighboring communities and organizations. So acknowledgements, I wanna just like make sure um, this makes it because Lucy Salazar from Kumri Humboldt has been a tremendous help. She's been the gatekeeper of Valley West. Uh, Dilo Freitas, hey, thanks for um, always checking in with me and letting me know about, you know, the back end conversations just in terms of what's relevant and what, you know, to expect. Um, Gillen, obviously you and I have been, you know, working together. We even went out and met in person. Um, Barbara Browning um, from California Center of Rural Policy has been a tremendous mentor in this process because she was the one who invited me to do the amplified human centered design, like kind of um, course that she led. And that was really informative. Um, Dilo was able to attend some of those meetings as well. Uh, Angela Glore, who facilitated with that um, from First Five Del Norte was a tremendous help as well with her lived experience. Um, her experience was always doing it in person, whereas my experience was doing it virtually via Zoom. Um, and with the population, it was a little difficult, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, Tobin McKee, um, he's uh, also another staff person on Cooperation Humble. He's been very supportive with the whole community health worker collaborative model and helping me feel supported as well as helping me with grants and other applications that we can consider moving down the line. Laura Munoz was um, someone who conducted some empathy interviews as well as was just a really moral, solid moral support individual. She's part of Arcata Playhouse, but she's also part of CUNA. So those are my acknowledgements for today. Uh, thank you all for being here. So let's frame the issue, right? Um, this is a nice anonymous quote. Valley West has always been the forgotten state child, right? And so just kind of throwing that in there to frame it out. And the introduction of this whole presentation is the city of Arcata, Valley West residents and community partners all want to see a better represented Valley West. Together, we hope to improve the day-to-day -day livelihood of the community while creating a lasting effect that can support the community as a whole. Our attempt to reach out to the community assumes that with insight and understanding of people's lived experiences, we can make adequate adjustments that best represents the need of those who occupy the space, as well as create opportunities for economic and social enterprise. So we're going to go over the methodology and the number of interviews. Um, so it's a human centered design approach, which, use a lot, which use a lot, utilizes the um, empathy interview uh, model to really just go ahead and get into the nitty gritty of what people think based off their lived experience. Um, the interviews were transcribed and analyzed for key insights and seven key insights were identified and we'll get to that in a bit. The interview were, um, so we interviewed, uh, we had open questions um, and we developed those um, collectively as a team. And then we conducted a total of 11 interviews of Valley West residents. So here is how we're gonna kind of like talk about like the duality of how the community feels silenced versus how the community desires to be empowered. And the hope of framing it this way is to see that, you know, right now individuals, they, they, they are present, they're living there, they're occupying the space, but why is it that they're silenced? Why is it that we have a hard time reaching out to them, right? Um, and how can the community, how does the community desire to be empowered? This is a, a good way for us to kind of just identify the current versus the desired. And I think we're all on the same page when we talk about desired. And so we'll just kind of talk through these. Uh, so all work, no play. You know, Valley West is home to a lot of people who are working 40 plus hours a week with growing families. And, you know, they're, they're just dedicated, hardworking individuals. Um, so there's a lack of um, common spaces to gather and host events, you know. Um, and that creates separation within the community. And that's not like anyone's intention. It's just the design does, makes it harder for people to interact and share. Um, and so we want to move from that to multiple public gathering sites, providing resources and program developments for the community to help build, clean up, and maintain public spaces. Um, and we see that as we speak to community members, people are like, when and where? You know, how can I be there? Um, and so that's a really that's some really positive feedback that we'll get into some of the feedback and the insights. 
Next, we have lack of resources. So due to absent resources, family must travel to seek basic health, social, and municipal services. Um, and this is common for other individuals in just the broader, in just Arcata. Um, so this is not like a standalone, in, like this isn't just in Valley West, right? This is Arcata, but disproportionately individuals in Valley West seem to have to, um, you know, make bigger sacrifices or take time off work, which for them is really, really difficult. Um, you know, supporting a family and trying to make ends meet. So we propose the desired future state is to have a centralized resource center, as you all know, is something that Kuna really wants to push forward and move in the direction of um, providing basic and advanced services and programs to support community projects, ways to get involved and complete bilingual services. Um, so this means that um, not only are we providing this to the broader community, but we are having an emphasis in the community that takes up the most space there, which just happens to be the Latinx population. The next thing uh, is the economic opportunity, uh, little room for personal enterprise and self-employment. And this is subjective in, in, in a way because, you know, if people didn't have to work these tremendous hours, then they would, may have more time, right? If people had a gathering space to meet their neighbors and share similar interests, they may have the time to do that. Um, so kind of the first two things lay out why the economic opportunity is, is you know, seldom, you know, it's not as prominent. And we wanna go to a place where there's lots of needed services. Um, this could be sourced and converted into sustainable business models. As we mentioned in the beginning of this presentation, Worker Owned Academy, um, and work around Humble is um, definitely a good avenue for us to kind of take in the services that exist. We're partnered with the SBDC, as well as some other organizations that can help provide Spanish bylaw support and services. And so we have these connections and we'd like to see it worked with more aligned with the city. So what did we find, right? Let's see what the research showed. And um, I will want, I do want to just mention that because I mostly conducted these things and I have this view and vision, there is a bias here, right? And anything that's presented, there's a strong bias. And my bias is really to self-identify. My bias is to say, I feel that if we can work in line with the people who actually care to make a better, more represented Valley West or Arcata, um, then we can create infrastructure that people can then engage and utilize to create things moving forward. And it's not all on the city. It's not all on Kuna. Um, we divvy up the labor uh, willingly and justly, uh, meaning there's compensation, meaning that there's, you know, not any, there, that, meaning that we're not exploiting people and we're making great use of everyone's time collectively and collaboratively. So here are the insights we pulled out from the empathy interviews. Insight one, people feel safe in Valley West and enjoy being part of the community. And this might strike some people as a surprise because a lot of us who don't live in Valley West, who don't spend a lot of time in Valley West, we kind of are there for a reason. And then we don't think to stay around and walk our dog, right? But people who live there, they actually see it as a good like community. And there's some quotes that we can pull that kind of explains and elaborates on why. So the insight too is residents in search of services slash support that can help bridge the gap on computer, financial, and legal literacy. So this is a component that I feel a lot of Spanish-speaking families suffer with, um, having grown up in a household that suffered from these things, uh, and then going to a school that helped me understand how to be computer literate and kind of helped me understand what financial responsibility was. Um, and then the, the legal literacy, honestly, was never implemented. You know, that's all self-research I had to do in college and after college to kind of be able to identify as someone who is a green card holder um, and who you know empathizes greatly with families who have to go through this you know system of trying to make it in America and trying to be legal and trying to be you know part of the community. Insight three would be uh, the community wants more events and activities to have more opportunities to get to know one another. So how awesome would it be? Like, I think people do meet in other areas and then they're like, oh, you live in Valley West, but then it kind of stops there. Um, but if you were to be in Valley West and be like, oh, we met at Carlson Park at the event. And now we're like, you know, trying to merge businesses or we're trying to like host little, little Tommy's like birthday party, you know, like why not help each other out and like do these little things together. 
So the community wants to get to know one another a little more. Um, and it's hard to do so without the proper infrastructure, without that culture. Insight four is uh, family-friendly events, having childcare and support to get kids involved in recreational activities, as well as programs to practice and maintain Spanish language and Latin culture. So this is something that the community feels is um, is challenging to do because the school does have some, like some schools like, like DLAC, right? From Pacific Union um, offers kind of some of that support, but it stays centralized within the school. All the themes are connected to what the school is doing. But what about what the community is doing or what the community can do, right? So kind of taking some of these models that are implemented in schools to support Spanish speaking families into the city, into a resource center. Um, so that it's all encompassing and that we're also not leaving any kids behind who may have special needs um, or, or, you know, support. The community needs a gathering area with um, seating and recreational equipment for children and young adults. So a lot of the people I talk to will say like they'll walk around the neighborhood and like in the, you know, sidewalk and stuff, but there isn't like a space for them to go and kind of like watch their kids while they can do some exercise or like, you know, do some, you know, assisted dips or something like that. I don't like just a place to kind of be able to be watching your kids, but also exercising, um, getting that activity in. Another, um, the sixth insight was a, a resource center that offers social humanitarian and legal support for all community members with the emphasis of supporting immigrant and newly entering community members. And then um, the last insight was a community green space to serve as a beautification project, as well as an outlet for apartment slash trailer home tenants who may want space to grow their own food. Um, and I just added slash trailer home. So I forgot the E, I gotta excuse me for that. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make sure it's not just apartments, right? There's like a diverse group of housing over there in Valley West. So I wanted to include them as well. So now we're gonna go over these quotes and Barbara did a really good job of explaining this to me where we really do take immediate quotes from the conversations that we have and we implement them into the insights so that we know these insights are connected to real people. So people feel safe in Valley West and enjoy being part of the community. Here's an insight, I, I, a quote I think I, is really suiting is like, I enjoy the small town vibe and often walk to nearby stores. A bonus in living in Valley West is that you're close to many work opportunities. And that's true. That's actually true. Like if you wanna get a job like that, maybe it's minimum wage or a living wage, whatever it looks like to you, but you can get it and you can start working and you can probably get a desired amount of hours. Um, but a lot of the times it's kind of like one of those corporations, right? It's Carl's Jr's or it's one of the motels. And you know that's not really a trajectory to like setting up your family. Um, and so, we acknowledge that you know people can grow comfortable and normalize these opportunities, and they're great. Um, but there's always you know a sense of like seeking more. Um, in my experience, this is a good place to raise children, and I think a lot of people said that not because um, their kids haven't been through some stuff in Valley West, because yes, there's prejudice, um, but because there is some balance and some exposure to a lot of these things. Um, and I think their parents kind of appreciate that it's affordable and their kids have been safe in the public areas. And, you know, those are things to, to acknowledge. So the second insight on, uh, you know, services and support that can help bridge um, computer, financial and legal literacy gaps. Um, here's a quote says like, would love to see community members participating in skill exchange slash share workshops to learn more about the skills available in our community and to work together to help out one another. So this actually came from an individual who is very savvy with his hands, but his work doesn't allow him to kind of like do this. And he knows that there's other individuals who live there who work like, you know, in textile or they, they do something mundane, something, you know, systemic, and then they kind of don't have an outlet to touch base on their other skills that they've had in previous lives, right? And so I thought that was really interesting because I work with the disaster response and community resilience team. And we think about skill shares in, 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 in relation to disaster mitigation and community resilience. But this individual was talking about skill exchange and skill shares to create a space to do these things that people can do. 
um, to like resurface people's skills and to rejuvenate them into directions that could be, you know, a business or it could be a service of some sort. Um, as a parent, I have had trouble accessing support for technology and counseling. I would like this type of support to be more equipped to helping my children. Um, and this part really, like this really hit me because um, like my parents didn't have the time to even acknowledge or think like I need to help with technology and counseling to help out my children. They were just trying to work all the time to put me in a good district and, you know, make things easier for us. Um, but this individual is at this place where like, yeah, they're working hard and things are easy, are like a little easier, like they're comfortable, but there's still these needs that are hard to access to be the parent that they want to see. Um, and so I think that's really valuable to acknowledge that some people are ready for these big next steps, right? Counseling, technology, learning, education. The community wants more events and activities to have more opportunities to get to know another. Um, más vale tener más amigos que dinero. And so obviously what this means is there's more value in friends and connections than there is in currency. And this kind of stems from this like high context culture versus a low context culture. Like in America, we see all of this value and just like sticking to our guns and being individualized. And then we can be like an asset to society, right? But in other communities, it's an asset to society to be able to be part with your society to be part with your community and to know and understand each other and to be able to reach out to your neighbors and to someone reaches out to you and it's not bothersome. It's like, oh, well here, I'm so glad I can help. Um, so bringing that community and that culture again, back into it. Family friendly events, having child care and support to get kids involved in recreational activities. Um, it would be great to have some support. So this is one of the quotes. It would be great to have some support getting children involved in programs that focus more on learning English and Spanish. Um, so there's this big like controversy in terms of like families being like, you know, we don't want our child to get stuck behind or left behind in schooling. So we want them to just focus on English, but then we don't want them to lose their Spanish and their heritage because, you know, you know, there's like a, a given pull there. And so, the, you know, families are kind of suffering with like, what should we do? And when there isn't resources to, you know, incorporate both English and Spanish learning, then I think sometimes parents make the sacrifice of just prioritizing English for the betterment of their child's future. Um, and this is obvious, this is a stereotype. This isn't entirely accurate because me learning both languages at once was difficult and I was behind at times, but I'm so glad that I stuck through it and that my parents made sure that I stuck through it because now I have access to different communities and different culture. And um, I'm, I'm really fortunate for that. And I really hope that other kids in the community can have that same experience that I had. Local landowners have been bringing in more families and trying to influence more of a family-friendly neighborhood. So this is actually something that I would initially acknowledge surface level to be like, landlords are being really like finicky about who they're letting in now but that structure has actually been very well received by the Latinx community there. Um, that structure has allowed them to see that, oh, we're not the only ones that think that this place could be more beautiful and that it could be, could be good. And bringing in more families allows that culture to kind of develop organically and you know, removing individuals who may be having problems with their neighbors or just paying bills or whatever, just like unreliable individuals um, has made the community members more um, you know, comfortable there. And obviously there's some controversy there, right? So this is the insight five, um, you know, more recreational equipment for children and young adults. Um, it would be nice to have an area that services as services as a family friendly park, uh, where kids can run around and parents can get some exercise in. The second quote is having an area with picnic tables would be nice so that we can have a common area where families and neighbors meet to host their own celebration events. Um, I really wanna emphasize the importance of commons here um, because what a common area does is allows people to organize, um, to share, to empathize, to get political. Um, and you can't do that without a place where it's safe to do that. And so I think we have stepped so far away from these common areas and we've seen them as just recreational spots, but really what they are is their ways to engage. Um, I learned about this um, at some point where um, 
guys will like only engage through activity. Like they can't say, hey, can we talk and talk about our feelings? Um, they'll say, hey, do you want to play basketball? And within basketball, you're like then talking about your feelings or something you're going through. And I think when families don't know each other, it's much easier to do an activity, maybe kids are doing something and then talk about things that, you know, maybe, you know, surfacing some emotion, things that are unresolved. Um, and so having a place to do that, you know, it's more than just exercise, it's more than just somatics. Um, it's building culture, it's building relationships, it's building trust. Insight six. Um, so the resource center that offers social humanitarian and legal support for all community members with an emphasis on supporting immigrant and newly entering community members. There's a huge absence of resource centers in Arcata and a huge demand. Right now, people have to travel around to get basic support. And so this came from a resident who's actually been here a very long time and it hasn't really changed and she's just kind of grown used to it. The last insight. So community green space to serve as a beautification project as well as outlet for apartment tenants to, you know, for space to grow their own food. Um, so one of the quotes is in the grassy area, a couple of picnic tables and an outside, outhouse for other facility like that would be nice. Some kind of toilet situation, a place where people could wash their hands, planting food that grows locally in Valley West. Um, see, people have visions <laughs> and, and they have aspirations for the area. Um, and they see these things being available, but no one can see these things happening on their own, right? Um, it's, you know, absence of resources, absence of time. Um, another quote is, I would be interested in food preservation workshops we should reach out to nearby organizations for support, donations and partnerships and community beautification efforts. Um, so people are like, just thinking like, okay, we get the food, but how do we like preserve that food? Like, I don't really know how to do that. Could we do something collectively through this? Um, and the answer is always yes, right? If you find the right people, if you get connected, if you organize, um, we can set these things up. And to know that there's a demand and an interest um, is exciting because we have a direction. We have some feedback that we can go off of. We're not blind. So now we're going to go and talk about the recommendations moving forward. Again, biased, but it's still fair to share these recommendations with you all. Um, I do want to share our theory of change really quick at Cooperation Humboldt. So right here on the right hand side, hopefully you can all see. I'll read it out loud and say we resist all forms of exploitation and oppression. Next, moving to the right we start to talk about building. We build new systems that meet our needs. And so we are identifying needs through these empathy interviews and we can build systems around these needs. We empower ourselves by learning the skills to succeed. And again, education is like one of the main components that will help people develop, you know, a community culture that is all encompassing to their needs. And then we aspire um, others to join us in creating a new society. And here we are, right? <laughs> Inspiring one another and so forth. So there are many community advocates who wish to be part of the rejuvenation of, of, the, of the Valley West community. How do we assure they have a seat at the table? Big question, right? So here are some recommendations to help us get there. So organizational transparency. So start with financial transparency, laying out levels of involvement, capacity, and priority levels so that community can fill in gaps or seek additional support from internal networks of collaborators. So this is in no way saying you have to do more. This is just saying what you're doing is great. We just want to know what it is. Um, and that helps us to like really respond and fill in the gaps and be creative. But if we are unaware, then we are less helpful and we don't want to be that. So continue to expand bilingual access to city services, including website. And I think that the city has been noticing this. Um, I know that Gillen and Lauda um, worked collaboratively to translate a page on the city website. And we want to applaud this and encourage it to continue. Um, and also as we have more members in Kuna, as we grow as a group, we would like to be part of this. Um, so we're not just saying do this job, we're saying is there, a, is there space for us to do this? And how do we, you know, meet, how do we meet each other's needs in, 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 in a collaboration of a sort? The third recommendation is uh, adopt a real ward system like the city of Eureka. 
Um, so you can consider working with Epic. I know you guys have been in the media communication with Epic um, in the past, implement a ward system that would help better represent diverse districts that make up Arcata, California. I think that there are definitely people who could very well represent um, Valley West and some leadership there would be, you know, optimal. Um, like I'm, I'm starting to see myself as a community leader, but I really just, I see myself more as like a connected daughter because there's so many other inspirational people in the community that um, I can't take any of the credit. You know, it's been only happening off bouncing back these people, including, you know, you guys. I, I'm seeing you as a community leader too, Oscar, just to let you know. Thanks, David Loya. Appreciate you. I remember meeting you um, when you were talking about sea level rise at the university when I was a sophomore. So we've come a long way here. Like I said, last recommendation, um, you guys have done this in the past and this is just a new take of something you guys already want to do. Um, so facilitate local Latinx roundtable. And so the way I would recommend something like this is convene and facilitate a seasonal roundtable event to identify strategies and goals to provide opportunities to include Latinx community members. So working with Spanish speaking community advocates and organizers, Centro de Pueblo, True North, um, other groups um, to facilitate mm -hmm. meetings entirely in Spanish. Um, and looking at existing case studies and examples of other communities who have successfully engaged with a growing Spanish speaking community. Um, California has this in a lot of different areas and you know, we can get deeper into that at a different time. Um, but I do think that um, just trying and keeping a consistent like way of like wanting to do this and making sure people know that this is a desired intent um, is strong and we can work together to make sure that it that meeting meets the needs of the community as well as, you know, allows them to see that, wow, our participation really did make a difference um, because that's what people want when they go into something. They wanna make sure that they're heard and that they're making a difference, right? Because time is valuable, especially when you're working 40 hours a week and supporting three little ones. Um, those, those participants are really much appreciated. So those are the end of the recommendations. And I wanna say thank you for taking the time to be here. Now open it up to questions, feedback, comments. Well, thank you, Oscar, very much for, for reaching out to many of us at the city and to share your great work. I think um, not only the insights and recommendations that you bring are really valuable, um, but I really see you and Kuna as really fostering relationships for a longer period of time. Um, and help really building those connections in Valley West. Um, and so I think that's very exciting, not only just for the um, proposals that you've been you know, put forward for the, the adopt a park program and the July event, but for future you know, happenings in Valley West. And I just feel like that's as a, you know, as part of the city, I feel like you're um, an important part um, with many community members and helping to shape Valley West. So just excited to, we, you know, connect more. Thanks, Emily. Appreciate that. Yeah, and tearing off of that, um, you know, just really impressed with taking the time to step back and go and visit and meet and do the interviews with people that are living and working in the Valley West area. Again, it's something that, you know, we tend to do, you know, on this sort of maybe triannual basis, but that population, you know, changes. Uh, and so to stay in this sort of really connected state, I mean, a lot of what you shared today are things that I think we've heard through some of the visioning that we've done over the last, you know, five to seven years in that Valley West region, um, but to kind of rebuild the connections with the momentum that, you know, you and other groups have created out there to move some of this stuff forward is I think helpful. Um, I appreciate the piece on transparency and we are starting to try to build that of being able to pull out from just specifically like the city's budget. Here's what we have this year really identified in the Valley West area, um, both as sort of ongoing maintenance support, you know, that we fund through, you know, whether it's parks or environmental services, um, you know, natural resources crews, uh, policing, um, but also, you know, do we have any pots of money that are just going to be available for things that, you know, um, Kuna might be asking for, you know, like we just need a little bit of money to get this event off the ground for the Adopt-A-Park event, right? And so the city has 
put at least a little bit of money aside. And then we will be having a much larger discussion about um, our recovery monies that are coming from the federal government through the state to us as well. Uh, we have spent very little of those in our budget this year to be able to have a larger public engagement around the council's real top priorities on housing and services for those experiencing homelessness on the Valley West area um, around you know, mental health um, provisions in Arcata. So some of their priority areas uh, potentially being addressed through some of that money as well. So um, when we get into that process um, to make sure that we have some of this engagement in connection with the Valley West community, uh, if we find that there are uses in that money that really could be developed towards uh, towards the Valley West um, efforts that we have. So I'm excited, really excited to have you on board. That's why I sort of asked the question coming into it and I'll maybe just talk to you offline about sort of the financial structure of Cooperation Humboldt uh, and you know how that works for your position because it does seem like you in particular are spending a lot of time focused in Arcata uh, and so excited to hear that you might be moving to full time and um, wanting to make sure we understand if there was ways, specific ways that the city could potentially support that as well. Uh, you know, not necessarily you individually, but cooperation humbled in terms of the efforts here in Arcata, you know, too. <laughs> but kind of yes, you individually. <laughs> well, I would definitely like to discuss that in more detail offline. Yeah. Uh, and I appreciate you sharing um, your interest and in supporting on that level because uh, full transparency, all the Kuna work I've done, except for a, like a small percentage of what my pay is, is volunteer. Um, and then the rest of my work is dedicated towards the DRCR team, which is, you know, disaster response and community resilience. But things are changing all the time and we have to be fluid, right? You know, if people come in and there's more interest there, I'm going to stay with Kuna. And I feel like I'm, I'm pretty grounded with Kuna as it is right now. I'm excited to see this stuff move forward. Um, I don't, I doesn't like the pay doesn't stop me from wanting to do the work because I know that the long run are, you know, business models, um, worker owned cooperatives, economic growth. Uh, and I hope to be in the middle of all that. So mm -hmm. moving you know, long term, right? Always long term. Thank you, Karen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, go, go ahead, ahead Katya. Oh, thanks, David. Um, I, I'm currently working on a or compiling information for a Valley West webpage on the city's website. Um, I will reach out to Lauda for translation on that. Um, one thing that we do offer is we, we have Google Translate available on our website. It's not perfect, but it does exist. So it's something that we're, we're trying to do better and trying to reach as many folks as we can with what we have available to the public. Um, I have received several questions about it and it gives me some ideas of thinking maybe we need to do like a quick video tutorial of how to use those functions, not just for ADA, but also for language. So more folks are aware of that and we can spread the word on that. I think that could be beneficial for folks. So thank you for sparking that. Um, and I would love to talk to you offline a little bit more about just amplifying the cleanup and also the adopt a park event because I would love to as a city send out a press release and show some support on social media to really get the word out that it's happening because I, I know I'm really excited for it. Yeah, most definitely need to get the word out. We started throwing flyers out there this week. So we're starting some of that and I, we should definitely follow up. I, I'll give you my phone number if you don't have it already. I was just going to echo uh, and reinforce a lot of what uh, you know Karen and Emily in particular said, um, and also just to, to chime in that um, we've been talking for a couple of years and certainly more uh, in depth, uh, in particular with Lucy Salazar about a community center in the Valley West um, and the ways that we can help support that financially, and you know I'm. I'm really appreciative of the you know collaborative approach um, that Kuna is taking to bringing this issue forward. Um, and I think that a lot of that work will uh, be very helpful in leveraging you know grant application for you know city support for for developing something like that. I also just wanted to you know go back to you know your participation in the last uh, meeting, the uh, you know the policy working group meeting. 
um, and just really appreciate the the connections there and the work that you the leg work that you've already done. Um, I I see the you know the relationships uh, that we're we're building as um, you know something that's it's going to lift up parts of the city that haven't been uh, lifted up before, but I think it's really going to lift up the entire city. And uh, really, I see this as a model for you know um, you know collaborative partnerships with community or organizations. Um, so just wanted to you know thank you for the work that you're doing. I'll just hop in and say it's been wonderful getting to know you a bit. <laughs> Oscar mentioned that we met in person. I think we actually met on the morning of Valentine's Day in the middle of pandemic winter on a weekend and picked up trash together in the pouring rain and wind in Valley West. So um, just wonderful to get to know you this spring, Oscar. And I just really appreciate how tangible the asks are, you know, hand washing station, community garden, family resource center. They're things that are incredibly tangible to make happen and to see the benefit of. So um, yeah, just I look forward to continuing to support however possible. And I love seeing you at Clean the Sidewalk events. So thanks. Thank you, Gillen. Yeah. Karen? Um, in terms of your presentation, Oscar, uh, and the request, can we get a copy of it or um, kind of what are your next steps with it? Yeah, so I will gladly hand over this presentation to you all. Um, I'm also going to put it on our landing page. We actually have a Kuna landing page on the Cooperation Humble website now. And Kati, I'm going to share that with you. It's in process, but um, it's good enough to have in public eyes. Um, my, my goal with the presentation isn't necessarily to have my recommendations be acted on. But I really hope that some of the influence can kind of carry some of your guys's, you know, direction. Um, I just hope to, because you guys have influenced me, this is a good timing for us to be working on Valley West together. And so I'm hoping that this presentation gives some, some insight and, and, you know, some inspiration on like how we can work together and how it's not far-fetched and how it's not making it more difficult. Um, and again, I would love to be um, you know, I would love to consult you all on, at different points of the process because a lot of this is new to me. And so I'm being honest and just saying that like, I'm learning as I'm going, um, you know, what I'm good at, I am like really good at, I can be passionate and I can, you know, execute and perform. Um, but there are things that I will honestly and just openly say that I, I don't know how to do this, help me, you know? Um, and so building that relationship where we can lean on each other is really important for me. And so by giving you guys this presentation, um, I'm hoping that we can just, you know, continue to form our relationship together. Well, we'll have to play basketball together sometime. Oh yeah, let's shoot some hoops. Yeah, for sure, over in Valley West Park. I take up, I take your talent. But like, you know, on the side, you know, yeah. basketball for feeling second. I know we have to kind of like wrap up, but I guess since everyone else weighed in, I would just like to say that I really appreciate Oscar, your sort of fresh energy and optimism. I feel like you always come from the place of like, give everyone the benefit of the doubt and assume that they're working hard and trying their best and want to see us succeed. Um, and that's such a powerful place to come from. And I think this is going to be a really great partnership. Thank you, Dilo. And with that said, please rein me back. I'm all about getting reined back and being logistical and realistic with what we have. Um, but I definitely can can put the energy where it's needed. Um, and again, appreciate you all for taking the time today. And um, Katy, let's follow up. Um, send me a text. Um, and Karen, um, also, if you want to follow up about what you mentioned, please, you know how to reach out to me. Um, Things are a little busy with the event and everything, but I will definitely 100% make time because I'm excited to talk to you guys.